good afternoon everybody namaste i welcome you all to this session on ashtadasa vidya sthanas an introduction to 18 traditional knowledge streams of indian culture our guest speaker for this session is dr jayaraman mahadevan director research krishnamacharya yoga mandiram let me give you a brief introduction about the speaker uh, jayaraman mahadevan holds a phd in sanskrit from the university of madras with gold medal and first rank both in his undergraduate and postgraduate degrees he underwent traditional gurukula education in vedas and shastras in veda vigyana gurukulam bangalore under pracharya kotemana ram ramachandra bhat since 2010 he is working in the research department of krishnamacharya yoga mandiram his work is in the field of textual aspects of yoga involving editing translating and disseminating inputs from traditional sanskrit literature on yoga so far he has published 14 books and 12 peer reviewed journal articles on yoga and sanskrit literature he is also involved in developing immerse immense learning methods of yoga texts yogasya bhasha a four part self learning material on sanskrit and yoga yoga vaisharadi a searchable web repository on classical texts of yoga are a few of his noteworthy contributions in recent times his workshops on tantra yukti an ancient indian thesis text construction methodology was well received by a lot of people his love also lies in composing sanskrit poetry on contemporary themes we are extremely happy to have you with us dr mahadevan i request all the viewers to post your questions in the comment section and they will be addressed towards the end of the session with an attitude of curiosity and openness to learn about today's topic i hand over the session to dr mahadevan to carry on प्रवेश मम वाच मसुक्ता संजीवयतखिशक्तिधर स्वधा नन्याश्चरणश्रवणी प्राणान्नमो भगवते भूषाय नमस्ते थैंक यू हर्षिता जी फॉर दैट इंट्रोडक्शन एट द आउटसेट आई प्लेस ऑन रिकॉर्ड माय डीप सेंस ऑफ रेस्पेक्ट्स एंड ग्रैटिट्यूड एंड थैंक्स टू श्री अरविंदो फाउंडेशन फॉर इंडियन कल्चर for inviting me and uh, acharya dr sampadanand mishra ji for uh, inviting me for uh, this talk um so since even my uh, days in gurukula i have always been inspired by uh, the teachings of shri arbindo and the mother along with the vedic education that we underwent in our traditional gurukula we were also taught uh impart the very great valuable teachings that shri arbindo and uh, the mother have uh, given us so <clears throat> with those initial words uh i would like to commence today's topic slide please is the slide being displayed so today's topic is ashtadasha vidyasthanas an introduction to the 18 systems of knowledge of indian culture so uh, one more click please on the slide so in the screen you can see a ship please consider this as a ship whatever i tried 
to bring in a ship image so the great ocean is seen behind and that in that ocean the ashtadasha vidyasthanas 18 systems of knowledge so they are the ship which help us cross this great ocean our worldly life the life of our day to day life that we lead so our ancient uh, rishis and sages have seen the world or our life as a great ocean samsara sagara and uh, the ship that helps us cross comfortably and systematically gradually so that ship is ashtadasha vidyasthana so that is the idea behind the uh, the cover image next one please <coughs> now the context uh, what is the context of this uh, topic what is the relevance of this topic so currently the national education policy is being hotly debated discussed everywhere uh, the new education policy rolled out by the government of india so there we see a reference to sanskrit knowledge systems very prominent reference to sanskrit and sanskrit knowledge systems if you if one searches the 60 page document of national education policy one will find about 23 references or 23 occurrences of the term sanskrit and of course we also find sanskrit knowledge systems so what does the document nep national education policy speak about sanskrit knowledge systems so it says that sanskrit is a very important classical language and also a modern language and it contains a great amount of vast treasures of mathematics philosophy grammar music politics medicine architecture metallurgy drama poetry storytelling and more so these are the words from the document itself para 4.70 so known as sanskrit knowledge system so all these systems put together the national all these disciplines of knowledge put together the national education policy states it as sanskrit knowledge system and who contributed to this sanskrit knowledge system people of various region religions as well as non religious people and people from all walks of life wide range of socio economic wide range of socio economic backgrounds over thousands of years so this current document which is being analyzed discussed and methods of its implement when are they are being thought out so this mentions about the importance of these sanskrit knowledge systems next one please so this this uh, so this is not mere statement of sanskrit knowledge systems it also the document national education policy document also speaks about the use of sanskrit knowledge systems for imparting knowledge and then it also speaks about uh, how the sanskrit and the knowledge systems will be mainstreamed with strong offerings in school and sanskrit universities will also gradually move towards becoming large multidisciplinary institutions of higher learning and sanskrit will become a natural part of a holistic multidisciplinary higher education if a student so chooses because sanskrit itself has so many systems of knowledge so it proposes or there is there are potentials in sanskrita to become multidisciplinary higher education uh, holistic multidisciplinary higher education scene in that sanskrita has an important role to play so this is what is the current context in which the sanskrit education system or the traditional education system has a relevance now next one we see we are already know that uh, shri arbindo has uh, uh, maharshi arbindo has given a lot of importance to sanskrita when he mentions about sanskrita in very glorious terms he says sanskrita is perhaps the most remarkably finished and capable instrument of thought yet fashion lucid with utmost possible clarity precise to the farthest limit of precision always compact and it's a best sparing in its formation of phrase but yet with all this never poor or bare a capacity of high richness and beauty a natural grandeur of sound and diction inherited from ancient days 
from the foundations of indian culture beautiful uh, description about sanskrit language such a wonderful thing uh, to be uh, learned and um, internalized sanskrit but at the same time shri arbindo also mentions nor is it the sanskrit tang alone that the indian mind has done high and beautiful and perfect things in sanskrit alone only not all the beautiful things are there though it is couched in that in other languages also of india all these rich and vast and beautiful culture is presented but still chairwind mentions though it couched in that language the larger part of its prominent and formative and grandest creations so of course all other languages have of india of bharatavarsha have contributed to the culture diversity and the knowledge sources samskrita has the larger part has played the larger part and hence the study of samskrita and the knowledge systems therein assumes greater importance next one please so these uh, so, uh, so these samskrita knowledge systems in traditional term sanskrit knowledge system is an english term which we use but in traditional uh, parlance so what is the terminology that is used it is called as vidya sthanas or shastras shastra or vidya sthana is the terminology which indicates all the knowledge systems in sanskrit so there is a definition of a shastra also in sanskrit pravrittir va nivrittir va nityen kritakena va pumsam yenopadishyeta tat shastram iti kachyate so what is a shastra shastra is that which speaks about pravritti or nivritti what is pravritti the do's what are to be done and nivritti the don'ts what are to be avoided so nityen kritakena va either by the nitya eternal lore or by the later literature which was created based on the vedas so whichever literature that is the vedas or the other literature that derived its origin from the vedas that speak about the do's and don'ts umsam yenopadishyeta to people whichever uh, body of literature speaks about the do's and don'ts that is the shastra now another question will come to the mind do's and don'ts about what towards what so pravritti and nivritti towards what pravritti and nivritti towards purusharthas so in our dharma so to do and to avoid what or in towards achieving what so for example in life so in for example a child goes to a an exam hall then the do's and don'ts are stated so these are the things to be done and these are the things to be avoided sitting in an exam hall so writing the exam is the purpose towards that there are do's and don'ts similarly life is like an exam and in that exam what are the do's and what are the don'ts so that that body of literature which prescribes those so that is a uh, shastra and life or the goals of life again in our sanskrit terminology it is called as purusharthas and again shastras do not exist for their own purpose they exist for guiding people towards achieving purusharthas so now so it is not mere systems of knowledge which we are focused on the purpose so before letting us or understanding the systems of knowledge it's very important that we know why these systems exist the purpose of these systems is to be understood before before we get to know the various divisions because the end is important and the means may sometimes be modified or varied but if the end is very clear if one is very uh very clear about what is the goal towards which these disciplines exist then uh, all kinds of innovations all kinds of changes and all kinds of modifications and creativity can also be there so 
for towards this purusharthas these shastras or the vidyasthanas prescribe the do's and don'ts next one please so the next one before touching into the divisions of the shastras we would like to uh, just acquaint our, ourselves with the purpose of life or the purusharthas purushena arthayitum shakyah purushena praptum shakyah purushartha those that are those goals which can be realized by a purusha purusha here means human beings so human beings they can achieve these four worthy goals what are those four worthy goals dharma next one is artha third one is kama and then the fourth is moksha dharma is leading a life of righteousness to put in very simplistic terms so dharma is a very vast term dharma is those conducts and behaviors and outlook towards life that holds things together that is dharma so that is a very essential uh, goal that should be a very important goal in every human's life it's not only self centered life a life that takes everyone along so that is the first purushartha dharma a peaceful harmonious coexistence which brings everyone together so that is the first worthy goal in life dharma then artha artha is dhana dhanyadikam wealth um, uh, all kinds of food and other material comforts and then kamaha various desires that arise in life putra kamana swargadi loka kamana so uh, uh, son grandson and various other worldly desires material desires that we have and then swargadi loka means attaining higher lokas like swarga and in the this life and later life various desires in this life and later life are described as kama and moksha ultimate uh, purushartha or ultimate goal of life that is atyantika dukha nivritti overcoming suffering once for all and chaitanya swarupena avasthanam being established in the pure conscious nature so beautiful blend of goals for human life <coughs> sorry beautiful blend of goals for human life <coughs> sorry again are given here so this beautifully presents that the goal of the the sanatana dharma is not otherworldly so dharma is there artha is there kama is there and it doesn't end with that <coughs> the ultimate goal the eternal abiding pure conscious nature so it should culminate there so these are the goals towards which the shastras or the various systems of disciplines help us in presenting the do's and don'ts next one please so in this manner so these are the goals uh, towards with all the systems sanskrit systems of knowledge traditional systems of knowledge exist and then how many systems of knowledge exist in tradition we see there are ashtadasha 18 systems of knowledge so there are four goals and then the the way in which the the life is vast complex so many uh, it is not a it's not a linear way there are so many layers of our existence so many dimensions of existence and there are so many dynamics that are working inter intra personal interpersonal and then uh, individual and cosmic connections there are so many dimensions of human life so accounting in all those 18 systems have been visualized by uh, the ancient sages and seers taking into account all these multiplicity of factors of human layers of existence and then they help those 18 systems they help put together in guiding uh, the human beings towards these four worthy goals next one please now what are the 18 what is the list is there an enumeration of those 18 systems of knowledge so in the in the second or third century text yagnavalkya smriti we see a list of 14 vidyas 14 systems of knowledge and then in vishnu purana four more systems of knowledge are presented 
so put together we get 18 systems of knowledge purana nyaya mimamsa dharma shastranga vishritaha vedaha sthanani vidyanam dharmasya cha chaturdasha so in yagnavalkya smriti quote we see 14 systems of knowledge and then vishnu purana adds four more ayurvedo dhanurvedaha gandharvascheti tetraya arthashastram param tasmat vidyaha ki ashtadasha smritaha so it adds four more and makes the list complete so i have just presented the reference we will see the vidyas or the vidyasthanas or the systems of knowledge the list of it in the upcoming slides next one now just pulling the pre ah. so we see when we uh, see the number how it adds up we see that what the summary of the two verses are presented in this manner so the vedas are four in number the vedangas are six in number and upavedas are four and upangas are four we will see the meaning of all these in the upcoming slides but these are the four categories of literature or four categories of knowledge systems uh, under which all these 18 are brought together vedas veda angas upavedas and upangas so all these add up to 18 next now uh, when we speak of so much of a knowledge system 18 branches of knowledge existing now before going into uh, discussing the the details of these as to what these 18 systems contain we should know or we should just uh, uh, look at or uh, reflect upon what what led to the emergence of so many systems of knowledge now for this we have to look into the mental climate so if only when there is a very encouraging mental climate very encouraging intellectual climate so many systems of knowledge can emerge exist flourish and survive across millennia even today when we are speaking about these systems of knowledge they are they exist they are being studied they are being researched not only in india in across the world they are being studied so when such solid sound systems of knowledge has emerged existed and they have been perpetuated then one should think of the origins of these knowledge systems how sound how encourage the mental climate should have been for the nurturing and emergence of such knowledge system right in the rigveda samhita we see a beautiful mantra which i like most i keep quoting this often tat suryasya devatvam tanmahitvam madhyakartor vitatagam sanjabhara so what is the devatva of surya what is the mahitva of surya why is surya called a deva why is surya called a divinity and why surya is a great mahitva is mahatva what is the mahatva and the devatva of surya a rigvedic seer he reflects and then he presents madhya kartor vitatagam sanjabhara whoever is working and in the middle of the work uh, the surya is not concerned he keeps moving in his track madhya kartor vitatam sanjabhara sanjabhara means he withdraws his rays madhya kartor means even when someone is yet to complete his activity the commentator sayanacharya beautifully explains this he says that the sun will not wait for someone uh, who is yet to complete his day's activity for example a farmer is tilling in the field oh some more portion of the field is still to be uh, tilled some more field work is there agricultural work is left i have not yet completed the sun god he will not wait oh let this farmer complete his work 
and then let me set so he will not wait so he will simply move on his track so that is his free unbridled freedom that he has and he is not restrained or constrained by anything he is not bound and he is free so this idea of being free that is the devatva and that is the mahitva of surya the acharya explains in this bhashya so the concept of being free is devatva is divinity and that is the mahitva the greatness so the greatness and divinity comes along with the sense of freedom so which can be seen in the context of surya right in the very original text of or uh, oldest text of our uh, dharma that is rigveda samhita and to make it more explicit later swami ranganathananda in his lectures uh, mentions he is a great uh, sanyasi of the ramakrishna order he mentions about the mental climate which is more explicit right in the rigveda we see about the freedom the concept of uh being unrestrained being free that is mentioned later in the upanishads it becomes more explicit when we see in the upanishads the mental climate and to quote swami ranganathananda the mental climate of the upanishads is saturated with a passion for truth and a similar passion for human happiness and welfare so in the context of speaking about emergence of so many knowledge systems this is the mental climate of the upanishads and the vedas so where there was passion for truth and passion for human happiness and welfare so when ranganathananda goes on he says the upanishads reveal an age characterized by a remarkable ferment intellectual and spiritual it is one of those rare ages in human history which have registered distinct breakthroughs in man's quest for truth and meaning and which have held far reaching consequences for all subsequent ages so this beautiful mental climate that was that that is represented in the upanishads and also that are that are portrayed or embodied in the vedas so that was the nursery from which these great 18 systems of knowledge that emerged next one now just for a, just a, we, when we look into uh, the the various upanishadic anecdotes especially there are so many uh, upanishadic anecdotes that 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 encourage uh, the pursuit of knowledge the pursuit of truth so we have we see in the prashnopanishad sustained enthusiasm being uh, portrayed by the seekers uh, in in the six seekers who themselves are great teachers they feel that they need to know more and they surrender to pipala the great sage and then they learn when pipala the maharishi says no you have you, are, you have come with a, a lot of questions but go back for one year shraddhaya samvatsaram samvatsyatha brahmacharyena tapasa shraddhaya samvatsaram samvatsyatha yatha kamam prashnan pruchata yadi vigyasyamaha sarvam bhavo vakshyamaha so people are the says you all come with great enthusiasm to learn so many things with so many questions but i am not going to answer any of your questions go back practice tapas practice uh, brahmacharya and develop your shraddha much more and then come back after one year then i will try to answer your questions so if with great enthusiasm we go and ask somebody some question then if they put certain terms and conditions will we not be discouraged but the upanishadic uh, seekers they were not discouraged they went back with the same enthusiasm they developed all those qualities of shraddha tapas and brahmacharya and then they came back and then the discussion starts so that sustained enthusiasm initial spark of enthusiasm will be there can we sustain the enthusiasm and keep following in the path of knowledge so that is portrayed in the prashna upanishad and there are so many such instances which indicate then later in the i will just indicate one more and then move ahead just these are samples as to how the upanishadic mental climate uh, was so conducive for emergence of various beautiful knowledge systems so in again in the prashna upanishad the, it is the upanishad of questions 
see a, a, a particular questioner ashwalayana he asks series of questions about prana he says kuta yesha prano jayate kathamaya tasmin sharire atmanam va pravibhajya katham pratishthate tenot kramate katham bahyam abhidhatte katham abhyantaram iti so he asks a series of questions about prana so where from this prana comes how does he enter how the how does that prana enter this body how how, how is that prana established in this body and then how does it leave this body and so the, these series of questions about prana when this was put forth by ashwalayana what did the sage the guru pipalada say he says ati prashnan prichasi you are asking excess questions ati prashna excessive questions brahmishthosi so you are nearer or you are the best among the seekers of brahman the truth tasmat te aham bravini hence i will teach you so it is an encouragement to probing thorough questions so pipalada was not flustered by series of questions rather he praises series of questions and he considers a person who asks a lot of question as a brahmishtha means a person who is best among the seekers of brahman so in this way then in we see in various upanishadic anecdotes and dialogues encouragement for knowledge pain when knowledge is not complete patient answering of questions and then truth in seeking of knowledge in all these anecdotes dialogues and stories of the upanishads we see the mental climate so beautifully presented next one so now we get into the uh, the vidya sthana so these with this background we will get into the ashtadasha vidya sthanas so we saw that there are four vedas the first uh, first block or the first set of vidya sthanas is the vedas is our the fountain head of all knowledge in indian culture is the vedas and the vid gnane is the, the very meaning of the term vedas is knowledge a repository of knowledge we see four vedas many of you might know it already rigveda yajurveda samaveda and atharvana veda these are the first or the first four vidya sthanas or first four uh, branches of knowledge in our tradition and then the rigvedas are in the form of uh, poetry and then yajurveda is prose samaveda is in the form of songs and atharvana veda we also see it is both in the form of prose and poetry so even these vedas they have so many further divisions samhita brahmana aranyaka and upanishad samhita portion is where the the core mantras are there which are used in uh, Uh, in yagnas and the rituals and meditation and the brahmana portion explains in which rituals how they are to be applied in various uh, uh, rituals and anushthana and then aranyaka portion among so many other discussions and topics in aranyaka we find mantras for meditation and then upanishads speaks about the moksha or the atman the consciousness so especially the upanishadic literature about which we just now saw a couple of anecdotes 10 major upanishads are there and so many other more than 200 upanishads have also been recorded and then we also see basically the vedas as per the tradition we see that yagne uh, these three vedas are used in rituals hota uh, bhai hota advari and udgata so these are the four uh, uh, priests who use these for inviting the divinity offering various uh, oblations and then praising the divinity and uh, there is one brahma who, who oversees all the ritualistic process so in this way uh, basically we see the vedas being used in the rituals and yagnas which are yagnas and even among the yagnas we see beautiful concepts of pancha maha yagnas yagna is basically the Uh, the thought of idam na mama that is the uh, attitude of sharing with everyone and sharing with five different constituents of the same ecosystem in which we exist 
so the deva deva yajna pitri yajna bhuta yajna brahma yajna so these are the various kinds of yajnas so to the divinities to fellow human beings the, uh, the animals which uh, uh, with whom we share this world and then the departed ancestors and the rishis who have handed down great knowledge which guide our life so with all these entities how we exchange how we share our resources so that is the idea a uh, beautiful foundation of uh, the concept of yajna which is elaborated basically in this vedas and then they also help transcend and realize the pure conscious nature that which is expounded in the upanishadic lore of all these vedas and these are the vedas and when we speak of the vedas uh, these four divisions are there and among these divisions for uh, they they have further shakhas further branches also we see in the uh, mahabhashya the great commentary written by patanjali on the grammatical treatise ashtadhyayi by panini that so many branches he in total uh, he mentions that there were 1131 branches of all the vedas put together they existed but now we see only 11 systems of uh, vedas that we uh, see one more click please that is there in the slide uh, so we see uh, earlier we, there were uh, um, sahasravartama sama 1000 branches of sama veda ekavimshati dha bahvrucham 21 branches of uh, rigveda 100 branches of yajurveda and 10 branches of uh, atharvana veda existed but now put together all the vedas much knowledge is lost forgotten missed in the due to the ravages of time we are now left with 11 branches of knowledge even those 11 branches of knowledge contain immense uh, knowledge and transcendental wisdom that is wisdom that guides here and also for higher transformation so and these vedas they have been commented upon across ages uh, mahidhara bhattabhaskara sayanacharya and various acharyas have written commentaries on the vedas at various points of time in history all this adds up to this vedic vidyasthanas which are four in number next one please so after that the vedas we have six vedangas now what are vedangas angas limbs of the vedas so limbs of the vedas so there is a traditional interpretation to the meaning vedanga means uh, so what is what are all the systems uh, uh, that help understand the vedas better so that is one general uh, idea that interpretation that exists so what is the eye of the vedas what is the ear of the vedas what is the mouth of the vedas all those interpretations they exist but i see it in a slightly different perspective these vedangas or the angas or the limbs are for the protection of the vedas veda rakshanartham for the because the precious wisdom the revealed wisdom which are in the form of vedas have to be protected so they are like the limbs of an army in our traditional uh, uh, literature on warfare we see that army contains four divisions ratha gaja thuraga and padati ratha is chariot gaja is uh, uh, elephants soldiers on elephant soldiers on chariot thuraga is uh, soldiers on horsemen horse uh, uh, soldiers who ride on horse and fight and then padati infantry soldiers these are the angas in a yuddha or in a war so all these angas of an army all the limbs are the components or constituents of an army who do they protect they protect the king so similarly these six systems of knowledge are to be considered in that manner they are the limbs that protect the vedas the veda purusha the veda purusha is the king whom is who is protected by these six systems of knowledge so these angas are anga rakshakas these are the ones that protect the vedas how do they protect 
be it will become much more clearer when when i finish this exposition on this so let's just consider what are the six systems are so shiksha shiksha is the first uh, vedanga which is phonetics how to pronounce how to articulate vedas as many of you will be aware that vedas are called as shruti the teacher pronounces the student uh, hears and he memorizes and then in this manner guru mukha uchcharana anucharana the teacher pronounces the student listens and uh, chants back the teacher corrects and in this manner the knowledge is trans uh, the transmission of knowledge happens through guru mukha uchcharana so in this process uchcharana is very important pronunciation is very important so initially all knowledge systems across cultures were oral later they become they became written that is true for our culture also but at the same time we see that the vedas have also a vibrational value that transforms that calms the mind also so in that sense pronunciation is to be done very well so there is a shastra a system evolved that perfected the rules of pronunciation so that is the shiksha shastra where varna swara matra balam sama santana all these aspects were discussed so what is what is what what are the syllables and what are the intonations what is the length of the syllable how are to how are they to be articulated through the various apparatus of pronunciation so all these are elaborated shiksha is a shastra name of a discipline in this shiksha shastra there are lots of texts at least 34 shiksha shastra texts have been identified in a collection there is a collection of shiksha shastra texts called as shiksha sangraha there is panini shiksha vyasa shiksha vyadi shiksha yagnavalkya shiksha in this way so many acharyas have written so many uh, treatises on the subject of pronunciation itself the next one is vyakarana is grammar so from pronunciation pronunciation is concerned with individual letters and syllables and then when letters and syllables come together what comes is a word and then when words come then we are concerned with how words are how do they how the words evolve what is the root what is the suffix what is the prefix what is the meaning that uh, the addition of suffixes and prefixes bring about so all these are discussed in vyakarana shastra so uh, from akshara from pronunciation the next shastra is vyakarana shastra which is a system of grammar and it is very greatly perfected in sanskrita uh, by uh, panini ashtadhyayi a 4000 sutra sutras are there in that text highly celebrated literature across the globe across uh, by even modern uh, linguistic scholars they acclaim it they praise it for the value of the knowledge that is there so panini vyakarana is one such vyakarana there were other systems of grammar also in sanskrita aindram chandram kashakritsam kaumaram shakatayanam saraswatam apishalam at least nine systems parallel systems to panini existed among which panini system has survived it has flourished and upon which so many other texts and commentaries and uh, explanations and glosses have been written panini vararuchi ka uh, patanjali so these three sages trimuni vyakarana basically these the vyakarana by these is uh, vyakarana literature or text by these three acharyas are respected and regarded while other grammar texts other approaches to grammar also existed in sanskrita next is nirukta is a uh, those most of the words in sanskrita lore vedic lore are covered by vyakarana but certain special words which are found in the vedas are to be provided vedic etymology vedic derivation and their deeper uh, inputs are to be brought out deeper dimensions and shades of meanings have to be brought out hence a separate uh, discipline of vedic etymology called niruktam was evolved duruha padartha nirnaya those meanings of words which are not easily understood so they are described derived explained in this nirukta text by yaska acharya next one please and then in the same way we have chandas the shastra we i just mentioned that rigveda is poetic in nature 
then if there is poetry then there is prosody that is how to compose poetry what are the rules that govern the construction of poem there are so many meters gayatri ushnik anushtupcha trishtupcha jagati chaiva tathati jagati mata so many meters have been involved vedic meters laukika meters those meters that were used in the vedic lore then later various other uh, great poets like kalidasa has um, bhavabhuti and others they have written poetry so the, that meter that shastra of uh, prosody that developed greatly uh, pingala chanda sutra is the original text or the one of the ancient texts which has which are six chapters of which three speak about the vedic prosody and the next three speak about the laukika meters or the meters used in the normal poetry so then that is the fourth vedanga then we have kalpa kalpa shastra or exegetical text especially that help in anushthana karma vishesha jnana so what what is the kalpa shastra contain kalpa shastra is in the form of sutras it contains vishesha jnana special knowledge on what anushthana karma those karmas or actions or rituals that are to be performed uh, anushthana so that are to be performed special inputs greater details about those karma anushthanas or the performance of dharma or rituals and uh, yagas and yagyas that are basically found in kalpa then again kalpa sutra kalpa is a category which again has so many uh, texts so many acharyas have contributed to kalpa shastra ashvalayana apastamba bodhayana Uh, satya shadha so many acharyas have written and this kalpa shastra again is subdivided into shrauta sutra drishya sutra shulpa sutra dharma sutra dharma is about our vyavahara normal day to day transaction uh, and then shulpa uh, uh, shulpa sutra speaks about various mathematical uh, uh, calculations which are required for construction of vedic altar grihya sutra various domestic rituals shrauta sutra various elaborate vedic rituals so all these details are present in the kalpa literature then comes jyotisha the science of time kala nirnaya so how to define time how to fix time because for performance of any ritual any act time needs to be fixed time needs to be understood the movement of time movement of days months fortnights year uh all these are to be understood that shastra which speaks about time that is uh, jyotisha shastra so initially it is believed that aditya the sun god himself spoke about this later there are texts by lagadha and then various other acharyas wrote texts like brihad jataka brihad jataka surya siddhanta and so on so in this way shiksha vyakaranam chandas kalpaha niruktam jyotisham are the six limbs that protect the vedas and hence they are vedangas one more click please so how do these six vedangas protect the vedas that is also very important very interesting input uh, on this is to be noted here that these vedangas protect so do the swarupa raksha artha raksha and anushthana raksha the form of the vedas are protected by the shiksha shastra that is the phonetics and the chanda shastra the meter and then the artha the meaning of it of the vedas are protected by the vyakarana shastra and the nirukta shastra grammar and the special etymology science so both these they protect the meaning uh, of the vedas and then anushthana raksha the protection of the practice is done by the kalpa shastra and the jyotisha shastra so Uh, that is the time has to be fixed and also the details karma vishesha gnana is also needed so this is a very beautiful principle that we see when we speak of preserving something protecting something and perpetuating something which is very worthy what are the dimensions of that thing which we value in a great way that are to be protected not only the form not only the meaning and all the practice also so these three aspects swarupa raksha is to be done artha raksha is to be done and anushthana raksha is to be done if something has to be preserved in its greatest glory 
without any distortion or without any distraction or any uh, 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 dispersion of what it initially meant so all these three layers are to be protected swarupa raksha and anushthana so this applies about our culture also when we want to protect our culture any rakshana any act of protection should cover all these three swarupa artha and anushthana if any one of it is missed then it becomes incomplete so it becomes distorted as time passes even now we are able to somehow protect a portion of it portion of our knowledge which existed more than 5000 years ago it is because of the fact that the swarupa raksha uh, swarupa artha and anushthana these three aspects were taken care of so hence this is a very important input about protecting when we speak about the concept of protecting something and perpetuating it next one please then the next so we have seen uh, 4 plus 6 10 vidyasthanas eight more vidyasthanas are there to complete the number 18 then we come to the practical sciences we see the next division is upavedas they are four in number so the first one is ayurveda uh, now the meaning of the word upavedas it's very interesting the vedas are there highly respected regarded uh and very the core of our culture and upaveda means that which is closer or that which is equal to the vedas which is which are to be regarded as vedas themselves so the the greatness these the sciences that will be mentioned here are the sciences for our day to day living so uh these are also to be accorded importance equal to that of or closer to that of vedas so that is emphasized by the term upaveda the very terminology upaveda indicates our culture again is not otherworldly it takes care of the life now and here because of the value that is attached to these sciences like ayurveda dhanurveda gandharva veda and artha shastra which are very practical systems of life which are very essential for the life to continue here in a very systematic manner the first one among the upavedas is ayurveda which is health sciences the basic in just to state it in one sentence in a very brief manner swasthasya swasthya rakshanam aturasya vikara prashamana to protect the healthy state of uh, life of a person and then if uh, if he suffers from if that person suffers from illness so how to bring him back to the state of swasthata or good health so this in essence uh, the ayurveda to ensure longevity so and by by this ensuring longevity so this is the crux of ayurveda various acharyas like charaka sushruta vagbhata have contributed uh, knowledge so general health about the body about the senses about the mind treatment preparation of medicines and details about so many herbs all these are found in the ayurveda shastra and in uh, there is a text called prasthana bheda which collects and introduces all these systems of knowledge in in a nutshell by madhusudana saraswati so in that prasthana bheda madhusudana saraswati says the kama shastra by vatsyayana as it speaks about the uh, the, the, it, it, the discussion of it the it predominantly is about the signs of reproduction ayurveda is also a signs of it also speaks of, there is a chapter called vajikarana where reproduction is discussed so because of that uh, kama shastra should also be included under ayurveda only then along with that not only the health of human beings are important ashvayurveda gajayurveda should also be included under this according to madhusudana saraswati acharya then the next upaveda is dhanurveda art and science of warfare so that is also important there are so many other texts one text called dhanurveda itself by vishwamitra is uh, mentioned in that text uh, um, <clears throat> uh, prasthana bheda by vasudana saraswati acharya where he says there are four chapters in that the first one is diksha adhyaya where initiation then collection of material for weaponry then attainment of proficiency in using and then finally how to do the prayoga of the uh, weapon so all these are discussed because our shastra the our uh, acharyas or our ancestors or rishis were very clear 
ಗಡ್ ಶಸ್ತ್ರೇಣ ರಕ್ಷಿತೆ ರಾಷ್ಟ್ರೆ ಶಾಸ್ತ್ರ ಚರ್ಚಾ ಪ್ರವರ್ತತೆ ಇಫ್ ವಿ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಟು ಸ್ಪೀಕ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ಹೈಯರ್ ಡೈಮೆನ್ಷನ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಲೈಫ್ ದೇರ್ ಶುಡ್ ಬಿ ಅ ಬೇಸಿಕ್ ಪೀಸ್ ದಟ್ ವಿಚ್ ಶುಡ್ ಪ್ರಿವೇಲ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಕಂಟ್ರಿ ಸೊ ದ ಅಟ್ಮಾಸ್ಫಿಯರ್ ಶುಡ್ ಬಿ ಕಾಮ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಕಂಟ್ರೋಲ್ ದಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಪೀಸ್ಫುಲ್ ವಿಚ್ ವಿಲ್ ಫೆಸಿಲಿಟೇಟ್ ಡಿಸ್ಕಶನ್ ಆಫ್ ಹೈಯರ್ ಥಿಂಗ್ಸ್ ಫಾರ್ ದಟ್ ಇಫ್ ಶಾಸ್ತ್ರ ಚರ್ಚಾ ಇಫ್ ಡಿಸ್ಕಶನ್ ಆನ್ ಶಾಸ್ತ್ರ ಶುಡ್ ಹ್ಯಾಪನ್ ಪೀಸ್ ಶುಡ್ ಬಿ ಎಸ್ಟಾಬ್ಲಿಷ್ ಬೈ ಶಾಸ್ತ್ರ ಅಂಡ್ ಹೆನ್ಸ್ ದೇರ್ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಬೀನ್ Uh, the science of dhanurveda has not been uh, neglected and it has been given equal importance and placed closer to the vedas themselves as upaveda next one please then two more upavedas fine arts fine arts are also very important uh, they play a very important play uh, in role in our culture very important components of our culture and they draw people from across the globe uh, for for learning this so they come here to learn art music architecture so gandharva veda is the art or the division and which again is given equal importance to that of the vedas so upavedas so the purpose of gandharva veda is kanta samhita like a beloved like a beloved it conveys again the same dharma artha kama and moksha only but using the tools of the fine arts like uh, the geeta vadya nritta so songs uh, playing various musical instruments and dance so all these are again various instruments which again bring the mind back to the ultimate goal or teach about the great goals of life purushartha and uh, all the kavya literature uh, like the drishya kavya the nataka kavya by kalidas and others can also be brought under the gandharva veda fine art division only and then finally artha shastra political administration is also an upaveda where uh, prithivyaha labhe palane artha shastram the very definition or description or the purpose of artha shastra is given by kautilya as prithivyaha labha palanam acquiring land or earth and then protection labha palanam so for all that the guidelines that are presented they are found in artha shastra literature artha shastra by kautilya is one text in that manner so many other acharyas have written on artha shastra vatavyadi and so many others have written and then attain uh, then the, under artha shastra niti shastra ashva shastra shilpa shastra upakara shastra the art of cooking and chatushashti kala all 64 other art forms which are there so which are needed or which are required for a king uh, to to manage uh, or engage his subjects so all the comes under the artha shastra which are placed under the upavedas next one please the final division so we have seen 14 vidyasthanas the final 14 final four are purana nyaya mimamsa and dharma shastra the purana is is a beautiful literature it's a vast literature for according to my estimate there are about 500000 verses 5 lakh verses all puranas put together 18 major puranas 18 minor puranas so agni purana brahma purana vayu purana vishnu purana bhagavata purana so all such puranas are exist, exist which speak about the definition of purana itself is sargascha pratisargascha vamsho manvantarancha vamshanu charitam chaiva puranam panchalakshanam five major aspects about creation further creation or the the idea of dissolution so basically purana speaks about cosmology the creation of the universe and final dissolution of the universe and then vamsha vamshanu charita again various lineages of kings and then the, the details of their uh, lives so all these are found along with that one glorified shloka stotra stories associated to that divinity will also be present interestingly purana is not limited only to that if you see if a survey is made of the puranas lot of yoga shastra literature inputs are found from that so in a sense uh, when we survey the puranic literature for example in agni purana we find lot of inputs on vyakarana shastra so in a sense they served almost like encyclopedia of various shastras put together required for that time period so in that sense puranas not only speak about um, 
the uh, the creation dissolution process and various lineages it also speaks about spirituality it speaks about yoga and it also speaks about grammar and various other systems and hence purana cannot be merely translated as mythology it contains a whole lot of knowledge that are put together and they didn't merely exist as mere texts or information they were used in harikathas where the scholars expounded the information in such a lucid language to people so that even lay people could understand what was contained all the basic information about all shastras are found in the purana literature so that is about purana which is upanga means which which also so angas we saw vedangas vedangas protect the vedas and the upangas they also protect they are subsidiary tools for protection in the sense they help in dissemination of information among the masses especially this purana literature so that awareness is created about the the knowledge the heritage the tradition the culture among people and they understand the value of it in that sense by creating awareness purana is an upanga that protects the vedas and then we have nyaya and mimamsa so under nyaya we have the vaisheshika nyaya sankhya and yoga systems of philosophy and then under mimamsa we have the purva mimamsa and uttara mimamsa so in among the nyaya and mimamsa categories we see the entire philosophical literature that is there so which is an extension of the upanishadic uh, uh, contemplations on the nature of the world nature of uh, the consciousness the ultimate reality so all that is discussed in nyaya and mimamsa nyaya is generally speaking is uh, the thoughts or analysis or conclusions that uh, one derives on his own but based on the vedas so the astika darshanas which derive their origin like the vaisheshika from the vedas like vaisheshika nyaya sankhya and yoga the the the, fun, the foundational inputs are from the vedas but their own thought patterns and systems based on the vedas were described or developed by the acharyas like kanada gautama kapila and patanjali whereas in mimamsa shastra what is discussed the total content that is present in purva and uttara mimamsa are the vedic uh, text themselves the vedic sentences themselves are analyzed in mimamsa whereas nyaya under nyaya whatever system of philosophy you find they are inspired by the vedas whereas in mimamsa category those systems that come they directly analyze the portions on karma or on brahma directly from the vedas so thus we see six systems of philosophy which again the deeper philosophy once understood of the vedas are thoroughly understood are clearly understood so again thorough understanding clarity in knowledge is the first step towards the protection and perpetuation of any treasure of uh, or wisdom that we have so that is brought about by this upanga nyaya and mimamsa and finally dharma shastra in again these dharma shastra literature so these texts they are smriti texts which according to the desha and kala they interpret reinterpret the desha kala dharmas and they help people to lead a life according to the vedas so these dharma shastra texts like manusmriti etc derive their source from the brahmana literature of the vedas and also from the kalpa sutras and then they interpret it according to desha and kala according to the time and the the place uh, where they are to be practiced manusmriti and other other literature pa, manusmriti parashara smriti vyasa smriti and so many such smritis are there they come under dharma shastra again in the prasthana bheda text <clears throat> itihasas and pura in the itihasas ramayana and mahabharata are also classified under the dharma shastra lore only and then the agama texts like pashupata vaishnava shakta agamas various forms of worshiping lord shiva vishnu and shakti also come under this next one so thus we have seen 18 systems of these are the basic streams the vedas vedangas upavedas and upangas they constitute the 18 systems of knowledge so uh, in the vedic heritage website by the government of india where which is a beautiful repository of knowledge on the vedas we find this list of uh, contemporary knowledge 
they, they say the website says these are the systems of knowledge that are present among the 18 systems that is agriculture astronomy cosmology mathematics science medicine legal metallurgy philology environmental study so all these are the systems which are again subsumed under the 18 systems next one please uh, even in the Sanskrita, Central Sanskrit University's website also, the same 18 systems are presented in the contemporary uh, terminology where we see Sanskrit and the sciences, Sanskrit and metaphysical subjects, Sanskrit and humanities, Sanskrit and religion, Sanskrit and the arts. So I just, uh, in the context of speaking about the darshanas under Nyaya and Mimamsa, the Buddhism and Jainism can also be included. Though they raise against the uh, the Vedic tenets, but still the moorings are Vedic only, which is stated by Swami Vivekananda himself that all systems that have arisen from this land, they are inspired by the Upanishads and the Vedas only, and hence they can also be, they are also included under the Nyaya system or Nyaya Upanga uh, of uh, the Ashtadasha Vidyasthanas. So, this is another categorization of the same Vidyasthanas, but traditionally. This is the Veda, Vedanga, Upanga and Upaveda is the categorization. Next one please. So now uh, I will just co conclude in a few slides, few moments. So when we uh, see so many systems of knowledge, so many texts, so many Acharyas, so many insights, uh, another question will come to our mind, did anyone study these texts? Then we go to the literature itself. The text, the Vangmaya, Samskrita Vangmaya, where we see there is a conversation between sage Narada and Sanat Kumara in Chandogya Upanishad. There, Narada says, Rigvedam Bhagavodhye, Yajurvedam, Samavedam, Atharvanam, Chaturtham, Ihasa, Puranam, Panchamam, Vedanam, Vedam, Pitriam, Rashim, Daivam, Nidhim, Vakovakyam, Ekayanam, Deva Vidyam, Brahma Vidyam, Bhuta Vidyam, Kshatra Vidyam, Nakshatra Vidyam, Sarpa Deva Jana Vidyam, Etat Bhagavodhye, Me. So, Narada says, I know all these systems of knowledge beginning from Rigveda, Ayurveda, etc. And many other systems are also indicated here. But he says, uh, I do not know the Atma Tattva, O Sage Sanat Kumara, teach me about the consciousness. So, it is in that context, in that Upanishadic context, we see a list of great systems of knowledge that are known to Sage Narada. Narada, Sage Narada in the Puranic literature is seen as a Kalahakrit, one who creates troubles everywhere, but he was a great sage. So that is also brought out here. And then in describing Sri Rama, we see in Valmiki Ramayana, Veda Vedanga Tattvajnaha Dhanur Vedech Nishthitaha Sarva Shastrartha Tattvajnaha Smritiman Pratibhanava. So he, was, he also was an expert in, in various Shastras. Again about Sri Krishna in Bhagavata, we see Provacha Vedan Akhilan Sango Upanishado Guru Tarahasyam Dhanurvedam Dharman Nyaya Pathamstatha Tathaja Anvikshikim Vidyam Rajanitim Cha Shadvidham. So again, Krishna is spoken in Bhagavata as to have mastered so many branches of knowledge. Next one, please. Now, one question will come to your mind. Okay, these are great people. These are gods. Narada, Krishna and Rama are people. They are gods. This may, this may also be stories that were made up about them to glorify them. We have great Shraddha. Those who are in the tradition who have Shraddha, we go by what the literature or the texts our Vedas say. But if someone has such a question, we see in recorded history, so many people, so many Acharyas who existed, who were Palimats. They knew various Shastras. Vyasa, he was an exponent in the Vedas, he wrote the Puranas. So that is, we, we see his contributions. Then Patanjali, Yogena, Chittasya, Padena, Vacham, Malam, Sharirasya, Cha, Vaidyakena. He contributed to Yoga, he contributed to Grammar, he contributed to Ayurveda. Then Sri Shankaracharya, Acharya, he knew all systems of philosophy, all branches of philosophy so that he could comment and criticize each of those. So, and he was an exponent in Nyaya, um, uh, uh, Mimamsa, Vyakarana and so many Shastras. So, he was, uh, he was, uh, was proficient in so many Shastras so that he could comprehensively analyze and present his views systematically which are very uh, inspiring and they guide even sadhakas even now. So Shankaracharya was a polymath and then Vachaspati Mishra in each of the six darshanas he wrote a commentary. 
in sankhya there is a commentary in yoga there is tattva vishayarati in sankhya there is sankhya tattva komiti and then in bhamati is a very celebrated great celebrated text by vachaspati mishra on advaita vedanta in this way vachaspati mishra bhoja raja bhoja's contributions are stupendous in many various in grammar in yoga in in even uh, creating so many uh, machines uh, yantra sarvasva so many such texts he has mentioned so he has contributed again nagoji bhatta in grammar in yoga and so many such other texts he has written appaya dikshita has written more than 100 texts on various disciplines and the redoubtable or the very pro- prolific and proficient acharya most respected acharya vedanta deshika so all these people were conversant with so many disciplines it is not only our idols like rama and krishna so these acharyas who are historical personalities they also uh, were polymaths they were scholars and even normal people it is not that one has to become a vyasa or shankaracharya to get to know all these but even normal people even for normal people there was an injunction that uh, uh, shadangaha vedaha adhyayaha nyayascha for every person of this dharma six angas and the vedas at least should be known so that was the normal injunction and uh, we also see subtitles surnames of so many people like dvedi trivedi chaturvedi all these are people knowing more than one branch of knowledge uh, one branch of vedas and then the word bhatta bhatta is a common uh, surname chaturveda vido bhatta uh, with chaturveda vidaha bhatta so those who know all the four vedas they were called as either chaturvedis and in the south most of them they are called as bhattas and shadangi is another name those the one who know all the six angas and bahushruta is a terminology aneka shastra shruti yukte the one who knows various shastras he is a bahush all these are names surnames that are used in common people's uh, uh, names so thus studying so many shastras or being immersed in so many shastras came naturally to our people next one please and then so how did how did such excellence in these many shastras were achieved of course there is no success without perspiration so in our shastras they say adhamam dasha chintanam whichever shastra is learned at least one should have gone over it for 10 times that is adhama the lowest at least for a 10 times whatever he has learned from his guru whatever shastra whatever discipline of knowledge he has gained he should have gone over it at least 10 10 times which is adhama which is lowest then there is madhyama and there is uttama how many times one should repeat so that one gets immersed and then develops insight so the point here is learning and then internalizing only when that internalizing happens by repetition constant repetition then one will get really proficient and then one can contribute something useful mere learning in, in in our days in our contemporary lives what is education we simply learn write and then forget but here in our shastras we see internalization by at least 10 times repeating the the knowledge that we have received going over it again and again if yoga then i have to it's not enough that i study yoga sutras once and then i become a master i have to study again and again and again so that vishvato mukham the multifaceted or multi dimensional inputs of the literature comes to the fore so again and again study is emphasized only then only by that proficiency is achieved we hear about nagesha bhatta that he read or studied mahabhashya patanjali mahabhashya is again a very difficult text to fathom 21 times after that he starts writing a commentary and making his very invaluable contributions to vyakarana and then uh, i had a conversation with the great scholar acharya shri manindravada shastri ji while Uh, learning about the ancient system of evaluation called shalaka pariksha there he says that in ancient times uh, in kashi how they used to certify a person is that uh, if a person can go to the depths of one particular shastra that he will be able to uh, explain explain the or memorize explain defend and then contribute new new insights in any given shastra if one can go to such depths in one shastra 
uh, who is evaluated through the system called shalaka pariksha uh, for his depth of knowledge in that shastra then he will be certified that this person has attained great mastery in this science or this shastra in vyakarana or mimamsa or nyaya or vedanta he has gone to the depths of it now he is capable of studying teaching interpreting other shastras also so becoming a multi shastra gnya or knowing multiple shastras came by going into the depths of any particular shastra also so that is also it is not that uh, uh doing this for a, for a for a particular time and then doing that it's not digging two feet everywhere it is going digging deeper into one system then by that other systems are also the patterns and the structure of other systems are also known so this is how multiple shastras were studied mastered so by going into the depths of one particular shastra as all other shastras are connected they all are nothing but contributing to the same vedic lore only because they are vedas vedangas upangas and upaveda so all are connected in the same thread if one goes deeper into one the other patterns thought patterns they emerge the structure of it the knowledge the purpose of all other systems they uh, they manifest to that scholar on their own so this was the idea that was told to me by acharya manidravada shastri ji while i asked him about this ancient system of shalaka pariksha vidhan it is not that they studied each and every shastra uh, individually but this is how they got the knowledge of all other systems if, if they just uh, glance one particular shastra text they would know what that contains or what is the essence of it because of their depth of knowledge in one particular shastra next one please now uh, this will be the penultimate slide i am concluding my this thing so last but one slide so this knowledge which was acquired how was it used or how was the mere acquiring process and how was it used this is also a very interesting idea which can be thought of in the current context in the discussion on national education policy is happening so this is also very relevant thought that is it is not that now uh, it was just a school uh, that is uh, one day affair of learning a context or subject from the teacher and it's over and uh, uh, writing the exam it's over so it was a four stepped process which was beautifully presented in naishada charita uh, in a in a verse we see adhiti bodha charana pracharanai dashastha tatsraha pranayan upadhibih chaturdashatvam krutavan kutasvayam na vedni vidyasu chaturdash swayam the glory of king nala is presented here how well versed in shastras he was in that the process of education the purpose of education and the 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 fruition of education that is also mentioned so the first step is learning next step is understanding and then practicing and then finally teaching and dissemination this is how any system achieves its uh, culmination or its completeness so learning and then getting enlightened about it listening from from the teacher and then going over and over about it and then understanding it and then trying to implement it in life and then finally uh, teaching or disseminating this knowledge so this is how knowledge was acquired and the completeness of knowledge was achieved king nala who is uh, praised in this uh, verse he not only knew chaturdasha so as i mentioned there is a thought of 14 vidyasthanas also he not only knew the 14 vidyasthanas chaturdasha vidyasthanas he was also aware of the chaturdashas means four states of knowledge dasha also means dasha is 10 dasha means the state so the four states to which knowledge has to be subjected he was aware of 14 knowledge systems and he was also aware of the four stages to which knowledge has to be applied so knowledge was always ending in practice and dissemination it never ended with armchair philosophy of learning and then relearning or just uh, leaving it by mere uh, learning with that step it, it never ended so it went till practicing and dissemination so this was the the importance or the way in which the 
the vastness of knowledge and then the methodology or the purpose of knowledge is also emphasized here next one one more next one please. next slide i'm skipping this slide yeah so finally yeah this last final thoughts i would like to uh, present before concluding my words we saw initially we started out by saying that uh, we need to acquaint or we need to just have a sorry there was a, a brief uh, problem in the connection uh, so the last point is so we have thus far seen uh, so we started out discussing about the national education policy we see that the government has its own plan of mainstreaming sanskrita and the traditional knowledge systems that will happen in due course but uh, at our own level at our own individual level what can we do one thing is unfortunately thus far we were not introduced to these systems of knowledge that existed in our mainstream education system so let's acquaint ourselves with this and then we can inspire our children and uh, children uh, uh, whom we know so with this inputs uh, of the 18 systems of knowledge and so this is about telling about the 18 systems and we ourselves can take small steps for that there is a towards towards reclaiming the 18 systems of knowledge for ourselves these 18 systems of knowledge were given by our own ancestors our own sages our own rishis so we have to reclaim at least a portion of it for ourselves so there is a four step method in our shastra which says ajnebhyo granthina shreshtah granthibhyo dharino varah dharibhyo jnanina shreshtah jnanibhyo vyavasayinah from the state of knowing nothing about it it is good to be aware that so many texts exist so so many systems of knowledge exist so many so many divisions of knowledge exist so that is the state of granthi and then taking up one text and then internalizing it memorizing it be it one chapter of bhagavad gita be it one bhajagovinda be it one ashtaka or whatever one small portion one text or the upadesha uh, the, the Prashnotara Ratnamalika, the question and answer presented by uh, Shankaracharya. So, any one text, we can commit it to the memory. And then at any point of time, we should be able to recollect. Even the small Bhakti Yoga chapter of Bhagavad Gita, a start can be made from that. And then, that's the state of Dhari. And then Jnani. So, we should, be, we should acquaint ourselves to the various interpretations and meanings. And we should be able to explain, that is Jnani. And then finally, the Vyavasai aspect of it is trying to implement those teachings in a limited manner. Whatever limited knowledge that we have gained from our Shastras, a portion of the Shastras we can apply, then we become Vyavasayis. And this is the system with which we can, on our part, we can play our part in reclaiming the Shastras um, for ourselves. So, uh, with these uh, thoughts or with these words, I would like to uh, conclude my uh, uh, presentation and uh, I again thank uh, Sri Aurobindo Foundation for Indian Culture for the opportunity and I would be happy to take questions.
Thank you so much. I think it was a very, very informative session and your explanation was very clear. I think you were patient enough to take us through all the 18 parts. And uh, we have a lot of questions, uh, but we do not have enough time. And I'm sorry so, for that. Uh, I would... <laughs> Extra time. Sorry about that. No, I think your explanation answered some of the questions also. Uh, what I request you to do is please, if you could take out time later in the day and respond to the questions on Facebook. They are all there in the comment section. I so, will do uh, Yeah, wonderful. So uh, it was amazing. So uh, thank you all the viewers. I think everybody did uh, love the session. It was uh, able to connect to what you were putting across and you your the last slide i think really gave us the message like it's not only theoretically but practically how do we implement whatever has been discussed i think that was great so thank you to everybody so we will see you all again next week in the session thank you very much